that note, I am going to ask you to join me as recognizing President Trump as our nominee and the next President of the United States. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. I'm not even going to ask for the no's. Okay. I'm not even going to ask for the no's. That was Ronna Romney McDaniel's final act as chair of the Republican National Committee. What might technically be considered election fraud. Not even ask for the no's. McDaniel officially stepped down today at the RNC's spring meeting after she was boxed out by Donald Trump, in, in part because she refused to fully embrace the big lie. The man replacing her is Michael Watley, a passionate election denier, while Trump's daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, was officially named RNC co-chair. Other than being a Trump, Laura Trump's qualifications for this role appear to be this. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Laura Trump is the embodiment of this truth. Now that the Trump takeover is complete, the RNC apparently intends to allocate its resources towards election denialism. We are going to make sure that every single penny of every dollar raised goes towards one goal, which is winning. How do we do that? We have to have election in integrity like we've never seen before. We have also hired and placed election integrity directors in battleground states who are already recruiting and training tens of thousands of volunteers to serve as poll judges, workers, and observers who will act as real-time monitors whenever votes are being cast and counted. And we will do more. Joining me now is the chair of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison. Chairman, it is great to see you. I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts about the RNC at this moment, but I do want to start with the idea that their winning strategy, as announced today, is by hiring a core of election integrity poll watchers. What does that tell you about how Republicans think they can win the 2024 election? Well, maybe they should use those poll watchers to watch their bank account, because I, what Laura said earlier was that they were going to use all the money uh, to help Donald Trump on his lawsuits. It really is shameful that right now the heads of the RNC is an election denier and a grifting in law. That's exactly what they have right now. So they can use their resources all that they want on those issues. Uh, they can use that credit line that they just got because they're broke right now. But bottom line is this. Joe Biden's speech was so good last night that it set records in terms of our fundraising uh, at the DNC and in the campaign. Uh, you know, as they say, he ate last night and left no crumbs. It was a master class in terms of strength, in terms of focus, in terms of, of moving this country forward and protecting our freedoms. And so, you know, we are really ready at the DNC to make sure that we help make the contrast between the hope that Joe Biden brings and the chaos that we see coming from the Republican side. I mean, you think about this. We are months away from this major presidential election, and they just got rid of their chair to bring two really unqualified people to lead their party. So kudos to them. I'm the biggest cheerleader for Lara Trump. I Go, girl, go. Do your thing. Uh, <laughs> spend all that money on those lawsuits. Uh, because the DNC, we're going to be working on supporting the largest voter protection program we've had, uh, making sure that our state parties are well-funded, making sure that we have boots on the ground so that we can do the voter education, the voter registration, voter registration, the voter mobilization, and then to protect those voters once they cast their ballots. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about the legal bills in a second, but I, I mean, I, I am sort of shocked by the fact that they're effectively announcing that the strategy here isn't investing in sort of grassroots efforts or, you know, whatever it might be, but rather poll watchers, which, you know, in previous years has in, in some ways been a placeholder for voter intimidation. As the chair of the DNC, does that worry you at all that, that the RNC is investing so heavily in individuals that may actually try and dissuade people from exercising their right to vote? Well, you know, for years now, uh, Alex, we've been investing because we know the dirty tricks that the Republican Party plays. They don't, you know, the last election, they didn't have a platform. So they, they weren't running on policy. The only thing that they can run on is fear. It is fear and intimidation. Uh, making people scared about voting, uh, it, and, and then once they get to the polls, trying to scare them there. 
That's why we built the biggest voter protection program that we've ever had at the DNC. And we didn't start this year. This is something that we've been doing for the past few years. And we're going to continue to build on that. At the same time, we're still organizing. We're still educating our voters. We're still making sure that they have everything that they possibly need when they get to those polls. Uh, and we are going to, uh, you know, buckle up. I, I know they're going to spend their, their money on lawsuits to, to save Donald Trump. But we are also saving our resources because if we have to take them to court to make sure that every American can cast their ballot and to do so unencumbered, then we'll do just that. But we're ready for them um, because we understand that this election is so important. This is about protecting the freedom of all Americans, uh, uh Democrats, Republicans, independents and everything in between. You mentioned the legal bills. I, I do. I should say that our own Vaughn Hilliard from NBC is reporting that Chris Lasavita, who's set to take over the sort of chief operating duties and is also uh, a big player in the Trump campaign, uh, he says the RNC will not use party funds to cover Trump-related legal expenses. No, Lasavita said in South Carolina, and then asked to clarify. He responds. He responded, "Effing no. I can't say that word on this family program." They seem pretty um, sure that they're not going to be using RNC funds to cover Donald Trump's legal bills. But setting that aside, what, what is, again, astounding to me is that RNC members are on the record saying, yeah, we'd like to use the RNC coffers to pay for Donald Trump's lawyers. I mean, what does that tell you about sort of the health of the Republican Party that it's so... Um, invested in in one wealthy man's fortunes well it, not only rnc members lara trump has said that that she was intending to do just that and that that was fine because the voters would be okay with that uh again it is chaos you look at republicans at the rnc it's chaos you look at the republicans in the house of representatives it is chaos uh, the Republican Party is about chaos. They are not about progress. You know, Joe Biden gets up every single day thinking about how can he improve the quality of life of all of America's people. Uh, Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican Party, either in the House or at the RNC, it's all about payback and retribution and revenge. That's not moving the ball forward. That's not improving the quality of life of the people in this country. And so that is the that is the contrast that we have in this election. And bottom line, that is why Democrats and Joe Biden uh, will prevail in November.